Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing with your hosts, Glenn Thayer and the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young. Welcome back again. Thanks for joining us. Happy 2012 to all of you. And uh, as you uh, listen to our last podcast, for those of you who listened to the last one or Tom's predictions on 2012, we talked about the internets. And uh, when George Bush had had, had the his uh, debate with John Kerry back in, what was that? Was that uh, 2004? Two, 2000, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. 2004. So and he had ago. said the internets. And, uh, you know, it's so it, it's it's fitting and it's true. I mean, we have... He the, was ahead of his time. He was ahead he? of his time. George Bush was ahead of his time. <laughs> the internets, uh, you know, and let's look at all these. And we talk about internets. I mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about Facebook. We're talking about LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Google+, YouTube. I, these are all mega sites. I mean, they're, they're yeah. websites on their own with their own search engines, their own communities built in, and they can be, can, can be considered internets. Now... Obviously, we're, we're looking at this this world of all these different areas, and let's look at it from a business standpoint. Most people have been thinking Facebook, and they go, "Well, mm-hmm. yeah, that's for the ki- you know, that's that's for people for personal. That's not for business. I shouldn't be there." Twitter, well, that's for people looking at saying, "Hey, my cat just puked up a hair a hairball." That's yeah. what it is. Uh, LinkedIn, that's for people that are looking for jobs or recruiters. I don't need a job. I have one, and I don't need a recruiter. And uh, you know, Google Plus, we have no idea what the heck Google Plus is, and. YouTube, you know what? We're not going to do a viral video of my my dog talking or my baby doing something baby funny, laughing, the baby laughing, or whatever that may be, uh, or cute kittens. It, it, that's yes. not what this is. You know, we need to really look at this now at all these different internets and how do we utilize them and use them for business and really take our business results to the next level. So, I mean, what do we need to do when we're when we're taking our business to these platforms, Tom? Well, I, I think the first thing to realize is that in the past, the internet was was really search engines, and then Google dominated that, and then it was web pages, website pages, which are still absolutely critical. But now, what's happened is that all of these sub intranets, or as I call them, intranets, have come up, and it's important now that we have a website on those internets as well. So you have to have. Um, and we'll call it, instead of calling it a website, let's call it a business profile page. That seems to be the term that is coming around. So you need business profile pages for Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, and YouTube. And then you have to post content there. And I think the number one consideration that I want to talk to people about, and Glenn and I were talking about this before we started recording, is that you've got to differentiate the business from the personal. Because if you want to have an effective personal social media area, you need to be free to discuss things and be yourself. Well, in business, you're wanna, you want to focus on the business. You want to be more neutral when it comes to things like politics and religion. You want to be more neutral when you want to talk about your dating life or whatever else is going on. And, and you want to keep it business-focused. So that you know, there, I recommend there are, there are exceptions. Big divider. There are exceptions to that rule, though, Tom. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> because depending on what you are, and Tom and I were talking about this earlier, too, because there are definite exceptions. It depends on what your business model is and who you are. Now, yes. if you are a, a solopreneur or somebody who works, works for them, themselves or you are a celebrity, let's say you're an author, if you are a professional speaker, if you are a content expert and that is what you do, then to be polarizing may be appropriate. It all has to be driven from what your marketing plan is. That's true. And, and, and I think for the most part, for people listening to this podcast, we're going to have a pretty strong dividing line between those two. Um, unless it's part of your strategy, like you said. And if, and if it's not, if you are a business that serves the general public, just like Tom said, you better have that dividing line there because you yes. don't want to mi- mix your business with politics and religion. And those are the two things that will kill, <laughs> kill, right. kill your, your customer base quicker than anything else. And I think that you know the, a rule of thumb is to brand your business profile pages just like you brand your website. So you, know, you wouldn't go talk about politics and religion for the most part on your website. You shouldn't do it on your profile pages in Facebook or LinkedIn, et cetera. And I, I think the, the key thing here is that you use the, you're going to use this strategy because it makes life easier for your current customers and your prospects because you can communicate and distribute content so quickly and so easily and so readily through these sources, and there's lots of people there looking for it. 
So the, the real goal, the real strategy is to strive for interaction between users and your pages. And I think like everything else, you really need a strategic plan for business profile pages and social media in 2012. And the biggest change in 2012 is now that is, is not so much that you have to just get some stuff on your wall, but that you actually have to have a business profile page. And, and there's guidelines for doing that. You want to have a good look and feel to this page. You want to have appropriate content. And you want to work toward a strategy that drives support from the people that are on that social media website, whether it's a like or a plus on Google Plus or whatever it might be. You want to build support. You know, you, you mentioned something. You said strive for interaction with these pages from users, and that is going to be the key on whether you're going to be successful or not with these business profile pages. Right. You can't just set up a profile page and say, okay, check, I've got a Google Plus page. Check, I've got a LinkedIn page. Check, I've got a business page uh, set up on Facebook. You can't just have that. You actually have to have conversations with people. Right, and it's not just um, what I'm doing. And you may know, like, it, it, it's not just what I'm doing today in the business kind of content. It needs to be content like what what we're doing in the business today that's driving results, what we're doing in the business today that that is effective, what our customers are appreciating about us, what our customers are looking for from us. I mean that that's very different from hey, we had a great meeting today and you know, talk no, strategy. People, you know people want people really want answers to their problems. That's right. They want solutions. Convenient. And the, Convenient what, what they're looking for is they they will continue to go to your page as long as you have information that will solve their problems. That's right. Help that, them solve their problems. That's, that's really what it is. If you have content that says, hey, great fourth quarter. Our year is awesome. We're having all these new products. If it is just promotional, if you have promotional copy on your business pages, and that is all you're talking about, you are of no use to anybody that's visiting your page. I agree with that. And also, you know, the fact that you attended a barbecue today with some people in your company, or the fact that you put on a seminar and it went great. I mean, it's just there's not enough depth of content there to help people solve problems. What they want to know <laughs> is if you have a new client that you solved a bunch of problems for, how did you solve those problems for the client, and how can you solve somebody else's problem? Absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. That's what, that's what that's what they're that's what really what they're looking for. And and I think to, to add on to that, we talked about this earlier as well, is that the people in your organization need to be highlighted. I think that that's one of the unique things about um, Google Plus in particular. Uh, and Facebook does this as well, is that, that you can really highlight photos of the people in your business. You can highlight bios from them. They can all take turns posting. And then what happens is you have a personality that's developing for your company. And that's tremendous branding and tremendous value because people people have to work with people. Um, you know, after all, you know, this idea that, that corporations are people, where really it's like Stephen Colbert says, people are our corporations. <laughs> and that's what it is. So you get to know the people in that business. And most businesses – in the U.S., by far, are less than twenty people, twenty employees. Yeah, it's it's small business. It and, is, and you don't want to. You know what? You don't want to interact with somebody who, or should I say, you don't want to interact with a brand. You want to interact with a person. Yeah, and, we, that's right. We talk about the voice of the social media. What is the voice of the social media? Well, if it's nebulous and we don't know who that voice is, then it's kind of weird. It's like robotic. You know, who's the voice of Nike? I don't know. But really, people work at Nike. And let's hear from those people. They should be the voice of Nike. And like, you know, on our Google Plus page, we the voice of intuitive websites is us. It's the team. And I think that's important. And you know, it's interesting you say you, you say that like Comcast. Um Comcast has a, a bunch of uh different profiles on Twitter. And if you say something about Comcast, they'll answer you. Comcast, Mr. Comcast. Comcast. Now it's not now Comcast won't answer you. What'll happen is somebody'll answer you saying it'll say Comcast Bill or Comcast Steve or Comcast Susan. Yeah. And there is a picture of a person and that person re reaches out to you. Not Comcast, the little icon with the brand. I love a it. A person comes out to to come out and say, hey, how can I help you? I know you had an issue. You know, you're, you seem very upset at your internet being out or something going on. How can we help you? And they'll resolve it that way. But you're dealing with a person. So uh, dealing with a person, I think it's great. So uh, let, you know, let's go to the next uh, the next area here. Is like, what are some examples of strategies that our listeners can use for their business profile pages? Well, I, I think that obviously the content we talked about and the and the quick information and the and the pointers and suggestions that's all very important. But I think definitely use photography. 
use photography to point out um, different content points, not just of people, but of, of things or situations in your company or products, services, whatever it might be. Make sure that you have some type of conversion strategy on your business profile page, even if it's a link back to your main corporate page, which then should complement what you know the voice and all the different things we talked about in your business profile pages. And I think that that this the strategy really should be around how do you do those three things? Good look and feel and, and design, great content, and all of that then tied into building support in all, all the different pages, like I said, whether it's a like or a plus. Well, speaking about content, I mean, how how should the content differ between the business pages on these different platforms than maybe your regular website? Well, what you would normally post as content. Yeah, they say we, and we have actually a podcast on content that you can listen to, but really the rule of thumb here is that on your social media pages, like Google+, Plus, for example, you want brief little snippets that link to something and that drive you know, attention and, 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 uh, and relevance. Um, use multiple media within the content, videos, graphics, photos, and so forth. And then um, keep it brief. And then your blog should be updates and postings that are a little bit longer than that, that you might even be driving people to your blog from your social media. And then your website should have a lot more substantial content and articles and white papers and services information and so forth. The key thing with content, and we've talked about this over and over again, is that someone has to, in your organization has to be assigned to do this. Somebody needs to be the social media manager, and it might be part of their job as web marketing manager, but someone needs to drive this. And we think that you know you want to have weekly updates, maybe bi-weekly updates to social media. You want to have weekly updates to your blog, and you want to do at least a monthly uh, email newsletter. Well, you know, something that you, you mentioned here as far as content's concerned, uh, we have a lot of generational differences when we start pulling out all these different platforms between Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+. There's different types of users for each one, and something to, to really make sure that our listeners get is that they're not – Cook, making it cookie cutter for the content. Like they're saying, okay, we're going to, you know, we have our blog post and all the rest of the content for social media is going to be exactly the same. So our, our strategy on Facebook is our same strategy for LinkedIn and our same strategy for Google+. Plus. You really have to look at who are your users that you're inter- interacting with on each one of those platforms. Yeah, now you can't, and, and that's, that's a very good point because there's a lot of programs out there now where you can have content posted simultaneously to all the sites. So you do a post on Twitter and it shows up everywhere. It makes it easy and it's easy to update content, but absolutely you have to go to the different stats that you're going to get from LinkedIn and and so forth and and get a sense of the user and what they're looking for. Um, In fact, really quick, I'll just give you a rundown on what the strategies are behind each of these uh, social medias. Facebook, obviously is biggest by far. In fact, they're they're just like Google in the search market. They're massive, they're huge. Uh, second place is very, very far behind Facebook. And Facebook is going to be mostly um, the wide entire internet. I mean, it's everybody is going to be stumbling upon you on Facebook. But keep in mind, there's a very strong social component there. And Link- it's also a different user ba- that people use Facebook differently than they use some of these other. They like, do, and it's LinkedIn. a much wider user base and much more use there. Um, LinkedIn is going to be more business to business, strictly business to business. Um, uh, Twitter is more uh, content information focused, with uh, was also a very wide user base in Twitter, but also uh, they have a very focused and loyal group within Twitter that you're going to market to. So keep an eye on that. Google Plus is new and upcoming. I see Google Plus as only B2B, and I'm not sure if folks would disagree with me. Google probably wouldn't like to hear that, but I think Google Plus is going to be B2B because people are doing Google Plus because they feel like they have to to get relevance in the search engines, and that's businesses, not individuals. And then YouTube is video, 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 and that's fine, and it's linked to Google as well, but YouTube is going to be important for content in video form. And I think Uh, we're going to see with Google Plus – merging especially because Google Plus, YouTube and Google are all the same. Absolutely. I think we're going to see an uh, another resurgence of additional B2B video that'll be and and video video content being created especially well, and, for that. Well, and we know why Google I mean the, the the reason Google Plus exists is because Google doesn't want to just be a search engine and get lost. Okay? I mean just just because Google's the number one search engine today doesn't mean they'll continue to do that. And 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 
the way people search on the internet can change. So Google wants to be relevant. That's why they're in smartphones. That's why they're doing Google+. Plus. And they're leveraging the power of the search engine to drive the social media. It's a good strategy. So, Tom, for this one, I know we've, we've given our, our listeners a whole lot of content for this one. And I know we'll be in, in other podcasts, we'll be diving into it even deeper. Yes. But, uh, you know, what are some of the key action items for our listeners from this podcast? Well, first of all, build a great company website. I mean, you've got to have a great company website because people will come check it out before they contact you or buy from you to make sure your brand is solid. So have a great company website first. Then lay out a social media strategy for the year. It's a good time to do that. And find it. Find someone to implement the strategy, especially someone to post content. That's going to be the key. Uh, get a profile page together on all the sites we've talked about in this podcast. Uh, one of the interesting things to do, and, and this is something that we're going to start doing this year as well, is user testing on um, business profile pages to get brand information and feedback from users. What do you think of this brand by looking at their their Google Plus page or their Facebook page. Check your stats. Now, I'm not sure if all the um, – I'm not sure if Google Plus has specific stats set up yet, but for sure that's coming. Each of the independent uh, sites will have their own stats, and you can also link it back to Google Analytics uh, as well. And then um, you know, just recognize that there's direct and indirect benefits that can't be measured from doing this. I mean we've, we've talked in our podcast so much about how you can measure and track ROI of web marketing. But this is one area where it's a little nebulous because um, most of the people that interact with social media websites don't actually interact. They just look at the page. They read some things. They bounce off and on. But what they're looking at and what they're doing is leaving a branding impression. And so there's going to be indirect benefits of doing this great. And so good luck with that. Reach out to us if we can help you. But put together a, a, a good social media strategy for 2012. Well, folks, thanks again for joining us and listening to the podcast. And uh, we'd love to hear about your experiences when you were out pushing out into the internets and uh, doing some business profile pages. We'd love to hear what your experience is, the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So go ahead and shoot us a, an email over to info at intuitivewebsites.com. And uh, we'd love to hear your stories. And maybe we can talk about that in an upcoming podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. This has been an Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. For more information and to see all the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitiveblog.com. If you have a website you'd like us to review or an issue you'd like to see covered in future podcasts, email us at info at intuitivewebsites.com.